What's up guys, Mike Iman here, your roofologist, coming at you from Dallas today. Just got done with an adjustment. Uh, we have a paid for roof here, which is always awesome. Uh, but uh, I just wanna take this opportunity to show you some more janky roofer workmanship. Uh, so what we have here, the, the roof that I'm standing on right now is actually an addition. So the main roof here is 17 years old uh, by uh, the homeowners tell, told us that the roof is 17 years old and this is four years old. So now, <clears throat> obviously when you're doing, um, when you're doing any sort of addition, uh, you need to marry up the shingles correctly, right? And so anybody that knows roofing is gonna question this right here, right? So how did they take the new roof and tuck it up underneath the old roof without disturbing the shingles? Well, I'll tell you how they did it. Uh, they, they did disturb the shingles. Uh, let me turn this around here, let's see. Okay, so on down, what they've done is they literally just lifted the shingles, tucked the old shingles, or tucked the new shingles under the old, and then did their very best to fasten it down as best they could. And it's pretty unsightly, but um, you know, uh, it hasn't leaked, and that's, that's fortunate for this guy. Uh, but at the end of the day, the guy is super lucky that that did not leak, because the adjuster and I are just like scratching our heads, wondering how that's even possible, because the issue is not the water coming off the main roof, because the lap is over right here, it's lapped over. So anything, the water comes down, cascades over, and then goes down. The issue to me, and to the adjuster agrees, is that the water from here to here, right, as it goes down, it goes under the lap, right? And there's no ice and water shield, uh, at least that I could see. Let me confirm that. Uh, now, it looks like there may be uh, ice and water shield, but it also could be like the old uh, paper felt. So that's just one of the things on this roof uh, that had our had us scratching our heads. Uh, the second of which is gonna be this right here. So this right here, uh, what you're seeing here is a cricket. It's called a cricket. And a cricket is essentially a rain diverter uh, that goes around uh, chimneys that by code are 30 inches wide or wider, right? So this is to divert the water around. I don't know if you really need one in here in this particular instance because the amount of water that can make it that, that amount of feet is almost inconsequential, right? So, but in any case, these crickets should be shingled or be made out of uh, a solid piece of metal. I've seen those as well. Those are typically on metal roofs and things like that. So what the, what's here is uh, a roll roofing product. So a modified bitumen uh, membrane. Uh, modified bitumen is a two-ply membrane. So you have the base sheet and the cap. I can almost guarantee that they did not use the base sheet here. Uh, either way, it's not correct. They lapped it over, have exposed nails here and whatnot. And then again, anybody that knows anything about roofing is probably gonna question, hey Mike, why are you not talking about the flashing? Because guys, that is not proper flashing. So that right there is perimeter drip edge right here, right? Perimeter drip edge that they have not even really modified, but they've used as counter flashing all the way around, all the way around. So, <clears throat> counter flashing should typically is about four inches deep or four inches long down. Um, and so this minor amount of exposure is just, is not doing it. It's not correct. This is what you use around the perimeter of the roof, not around the perimeter of the chimney. So the good thing, the caveat here is that we're gonna be able to fix all these little issues um, when we install this roof, uh, which is obviously gonna be coming very, very soon. So anyways, with that, I just wanted to share the jankiness with you. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your beautiful day, and we'll talk to the next roof. Bye.